good afternoon everybody okay so um you can actually check now all right okay Um, good afternoon. Oh, sorry, trying to. So, Charles. Ah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, sorry, I actually like to join. Um, add Charles to our live. Um, so good afternoon. So we're trying to actually set up. So you j please, um, bear with us. Just a few minutes will actually um start. Yeah, um, Charles, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, can you hear me? I can do, I can hear you well. Just give me a few minutes, I'll just uh, tinker with my iPad as we, before we get ready. One, one second. I'll just make this a landscape. Okay, so while you're actually trying to get your iPad, let me just introduce you. Um, and um, we'll be having Charles Maggie, who is the International Regional Manager for Birmingham City University in the UK. Um, so um, Charles will actually be telling us um, a lot about BCU and why you should come to BCU. So if for prospective students, so if those who are actually considering going to study abroad, BCU, so um, you'll be hearing from Charles today. So Charles will actually tell us more about uh, Birmingham City University and the location where it is and the opportunities and uh, maybe discounts or scholarships available at BCU. Hi, Charles. You're welcome to our live today. Thank you very much for having me here today. Yeah, we've actually been waiting for this day. Okay, so Charles, um, I don't know, would you just start by just telling us about, uh, just tell us about BCU basically, or start with your name and tell us your position and probably tell us, um, tell us about BCU. Okay. Uh, my name is Charles McGee. I'm the International Regional Manager at Birmingham City University. Um, I've been working here for nearly 14 years, and most of that time I've been a uh, regional manager for Africa, and I've been to Nigeria numerous times, and all places in Lagos, like Ikeja, Ikui, VI, Lekki 1, Lekki 2, etc., etc. I've been to all other parts of Nigeria, like Abuja, Benin City, uh, Kaduna, Kano, Etc. So I'm well, I would say, well familiar with Nigeria and the issues. So a little bit about BCU. It's very much the old with the new. And we, our history dates back to 1843. And it was very much originally a college with crafts and arts people who uh, needed to be trained up and work collaboratively to build the industry. And that was the emphasis and onus of the start of BCU and its values. And it's growing up and uh, became later on a bigger college and then a polytechnic and then a university. Um, so it's now it has a student population of 25,000 students, full time, part time, day release, etc. So that's a few top lines. Nelson. OK. All right. Thank you for um, just intro uh, doing the introduction about BCU. Okay, so um, the next question, because a lot of people want to know why should they consider BCU? Why should I come to BCU? Okay, to keep it short and simple, um, I would say 
um, three main reasons. Firstly, our academics have gained many of them industry-led expertise. I worked for 10, 15, 20 years plus in working in their profession, sometimes at highest level, and then they have went in to get involved in lecturing, teaching, or research. So we have got people who have gained real world experience who are academically qualified and teach on our programs. So that experience is invaluable. Let me give you a few examples. Like in the subject of law, we have people who have been solicitors or are continuing working part-time solicitors who teach our, on our law programs. Mm -hmm. And you might think, how is that relevant? Well, some other universities may have doctors and professors of law who teach from a theoretical research basis, but they've never practiced law in their life. And so the experience you get as a student is very different. So if you want real world expertise and how it really works and taught and, and the curriculum are adjusted to that, then consider BCU. If you want theory, there's lots of other universities. Secondly, our facilities and our equipment. Um, our facilities have been recently modernized and we built lots of new buildings. Um, people who visit us think our buildings are beautiful. We have state-of-the-art facilities, for instance, in engineering. Um, our, our students work with in equipment that modern car manufacturers use. And they're also involved in designing, testing, building, and, race, and, and racing cars. So that's what our automotive and mechanical engineering students can opt to and get involved. And then like our business, some of our business students like in finance investment, you know, are taught about the, the London Stock Exchange and are shown about how the tr tracking system works. And so to get real world exposure, uh, that this equipment and in terms, and this is linked to our, our learning, it's very much practice based learning. For instance, in the subject of law I mentioned, like if you're, the questions and assignments you're asked to do is you're given it, you're taught the law, but then the assessment is not the regurgitation of the law. It's like a practical legal problem. Joe Bloggs has got himself into legal difficulties with this blah, blah, blah. And say if you're learning contract law, then based on your knowledge of contract law, advise Joe, Joe Bloggs, Joe Smith, how he can solve. So you take what the law says, the knowledge of the law, and you apply it to his situation. I remember talking to an overseas student about why he wanted to come to an LLM in the UK, specifically at BCU. And he says, it's this, in my law firms, I've got people who are from this country and have people who've been to the UK. And the people who've been in the UK can, are more productive, they can get into the core issues quickly, and because of that, they get better bonuses and things. And because of their experience, the type of education we have, practice-based learning, I want to buy into it so I can be a better professional in the future. So those are three reasons why you should come to BCU. Okay, so um, I, I think you've been talking about some, uh, you're talking about law courses. What, what are there other courses that uh, BCU offer? Can you just list the courses that P BCU actually offer so people can actually know? Okay, there's well over 300 courses, but I'll just focus on the most popular programs. So in, in business, and I'll just focus mainly master's programs because most Nigerians who are applying, 95% are master's level. So in business, we have the typical MBA, MSc management. We have, uh, for people who want to become human resource managers, we have MA, International Human Resource Management, with full CIPD accreditation. We have MSc Accounting and Finance and a number of like finance ones like finance investment, etc. Um, moving on, I'll skip law programs. I'll skip. Well, I mentioned we have international uh, business law. We inter have international human rights law. We have a number of LLM programs and their conversion. You don't have to have an English law degree. Uh, we also have the LLB program. In our computing-based programs, we have the big three that are very important in 
the IT sector in, in the world. We've got artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and digital transformation. In the London and wider UK, it's those are the three main trends that are happening in the computer industry. And we provide master's course that fits into the industry. We also have advanced uh, computer networks. We have big data analytics. So very contemporary, very cutting edge, very what employers want. Okay. Uh, in construction, we have construction project management for civil engineers who want that management skills and real world. In ADM faculty, we have public relations, we have architecture. In health, we have nursing and public health. So that's, that's a, a synopsis of our programs. Oh, uh, thank you for um, listing those courses, basically. So those who have, who have questions about, oh, what are the courses, can actually go on your page. If you obviously did not get the number of um, courses that um, Charles have actually listed, you can actually go on the BCU page and you'll see the courses offered by BCU. All right, thank you, Charles. Okay, the next question is, and uh, this is the question that is actually on the mind of people or the mind of students who are actually considering the UK. Now, so would you tell us um, the discounts or scholarship um, available at BCU? Okay, yes, I can. No, it's based on academic merit. It's open for everyone. And people receive the scholarship or get notification uh, after they pay the deposit. So you apply, get a conditional, unconditional offer, accept your offer, pay your deposit, then you get your scholarship. What's their scholarship based on? Um, excuse me. Uh, so what's our scholarship based on? Well, it depends, it's on your academic merit. So if you got a 2 2, we will give you a 1,000 pound discount. Uh, from your fees. If you got a 2-1 or second class upper degree, we'll give you £1,500. And if you uh, gain the first class in Nigeria, we'll award you £2,000 discounted from your fees. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you so much for that. So um, I want to find out about, so somebody's asking, or one of the questions that, um, I was asked uh, have third class third class hnd do you have does bcu have any options for them is there any options for third class or, or hnd orders um we have we have options for people who attain a third class degree so we have two main options for those who want to do what i call a, a built-in or built-in pre-masters programs one we have an international mba we have a longer duration for people's third class where the, basically the first semester is a pre-master's and it's free. The pre-master's is built in free component. You need to pay your deposit for the course. And then the second one is MSc Management and International Business. Uh, we have that program as well. So, um, so we have these programs and we give 500 pounds discount uh, um, against the tuition fees. So um, that is an option available uh, to people third class. For HND holders, we have pre master's programs at BCUIC. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, so, would you, would you like to tell us about um, the deposit? How much is the uh, initial deposit for uh, Birmingham City University? For recent offer holders, if you've been made an offer, uh, our, our deposit's £4,000. Um, so once you get your unconditional offer and you firm up, our deposit's £4,000. And that is a part payment towards your tuition fees. Okay. Do I have to pay, um, does, do students have to pay on enrollment? Um, they have to pay after they pay the deposit and after they get the, their visa, do the precast interview, get their visa. When they come, they must pay up to 50% 50 50 off their tuition fees at enrollment. I would advise if they can pay before the physical enrollment. Okay, thank you for that um, clarification. So a lot of people want to know how long it takes BCU to actually, um, I have all my documents, and uh, I want to put in an application. How long does it take? What's the turnaround time for 
response in terms of admission for BCU? Now, this is the most busiest time period of the year. And so um, there is an, a surge of applications that we are receiving. But people apply through your agency and we're offering the fast track service most weeks we do, then we could, depending on demand, can, we can turn around applications in two or three days through your agency, if all documents are complete. Oh, okay, okay. So generally tell us about, um, generally tell us about um, the UK and the job market. What's the opportunities for international students who, okay. who are considering coming to the UK in terms of job market and the UK and Thailand? Okay, um, can I be just excused um, for a minute? I just have to do a quick urgent job. 30 seconds, please. Okay. All right, that's fine. Okay. Oh, um, sorry. While we are waiting for um, Charles to be back, uh, you have your questions. You can actually drop your questions, and probably um, I'll probably ask Charles those questions, and um, I'm sure that he would actually answer um, some of our questions. But if you drop your questions and you do not get any, um, or Charles does not address it, please do not um, just take it easy with us. We will probably either send us a DM or we'll probably respond to you because we really don't much time here but trust me so that he answers most of the questions here so charles i was just trying to tell them that um i know a lot of people have questions and they'll probably want to ask you questions so when is the uh, q and a section i'll probably let you know all right you can go ahead okay does a person want to ask me a question no a lot of people ask you questions but i, I want to actually actually answer these questions i've actually listed and then we cannot open the floor for people to actually ask their questions. So we'll just right. the UK market in terms of job for international students. Okay. Now, currently, um, we have record numbers of jobs um, in the employment market. At this point in time, we have, we have more employment opportunities in the UK market than we have unemployed people in the United Kingdom. That's off yesterday. It was in the B look at the BBC website and check it. So why has that been created? Well, there's been a surge of recovery from the pandemic. And secondly, because of Brexit, EU citizens cannot cross the border and come into the UK and work here. They need to apply for a visa to work here. So a lot of jobs are now available to international students. Um, now, within the, while you're a student, now we're a city-based university, while you're a student, we have an employment camp agency in the um, campus, um, so you can find out if there are any campus-based jobs, but also, because we're a city centre, we, there are lots of employment agencies are in and around uh, the city centre, and also, uh, we have big supermarkets in this top, in this city. So if even before you leave Nigeria, you can have a look like Tesco's or Sainsbury's, Asda. You can look at their website and they place job positions on their website. So the, there are, if you want to work and you act in a reasonable, competent manner at a job interview, you will get a part-time job. There's no problem. All international students coming from Nigeria, it'll be on your visa unless there's something, something went wrong. But you will are permitted to work 20 hours a week during term time and full time during vacation periods, Christmas and Easter time period. Don't exceed that because if you want to work uh, under the graduate visa, if you've gone beyond your hours, your graduate visa application will later be uh, cancelled. So it's very important you obey the rules of the land. But going back to the main point is there are lots of job opportunities in Birmingham. We are the second largest city in the United Kingdom after London. So um, this is a really fantastic time to come to the UK and work to study and to work part time. All right. Thank you so much for that information. Like Charles said, it, while you're in Nigeria, you can actually start applying for jobs. All you need to do is just go on the page, Google um, the available jobs um, while you're in Nigeria, submit your CV. It's safer when you're 
at least you start the process now when you get to the uk it's easier for you but if you're not if um, like you said there are job opportunities in the uk now compared to um the uk two years ago uh, thank okay. you charles for that so can you just please one mo just one point clarification you can look and you can apply um there's nothing stopping you but to start working in the united kingdom legally um you will have to wait to in the official enrollment and you have to get a UK bank account before the start of your employment. But there's nothing stopping you looking and applying. It's often better to have a, if you've got your accommodation sorted out and you've got a UK address, a week before you can start uh, applying for the job and using that as a corresponding address if they need it. But a lot of things, because a lot of things are done online. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You just talked about accommodation. I think some people are asking. So can you please just tell us the sort of accommodations and how much accommodation is in uh, Birmingham? Okay. Now, if the interesting thing about Birmingham is if you go outside the city centre in areas like Hansworth and, or Hansworth Wood, you can get a, affordable shared accommodation. Say if you're willing to share with others in a house, you could get 50, 60 pounds per week. So that's about 240 pounds per month. But if you want to live in state-of-the-art accommodation like University Locks, which is behind our business school, and you want, you want the convenience where you've got your ensuite, you've got your own room, you've got your own ensuite shower facilities, bathroom, uh, high-speed Wi-Fi, and the only thing, and then there's a shared kitchen. The only thing you have to buy after the rent is your food and any clothing. That's 155 pounds a week. University logs, and the, there's other accommodation that varies. Some is cheaper, and some a little bit more expensive. But if you look at university accommodation, 150 to 155 pounds. If you want university accommodation, if you so. Depends what you want. If you want the convenience, you just want to pay one bill and then buy your food, stay in the university accommodation. But if you want to save money, there's lots of options in Birmingham of living shared accommodation in certain districts in Birmingham, like Hansworth, where you have only about £10 or £11 per week, buy a weekly bus pass, and you can go anywhere in the city and, and live in a cheaper accommodation and travel in two miles. And buses in... Birmingham are not like buses in Lagos. They're, they're bigger, they're double-decker, they're cleaner, and they're less congested. And there's less congestion in Birmingham than what you all ex you have experienced in Lagos. So it, to get two or three miles, even in commuter time, only take like 20 minutes to 30 minutes at worst commuter time. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so if you want to go, if you actually want to see how the buses is in Birmingham, it's, I think it's best to start applying now. Like Charles said, their accommodation is not like, um, their, their, buses is, their buses are not like Nigerian buses. All right, thank you, Charles. Okay, so um, since we have a fair on Saturday and a lot of people will probably want to ask you or a lot of people will want to know more about BCU, I wouldn't want to take too much of your time. I know you are at work and you need to go back to work. But if you want to know more about BCU, come um, Saturday, that's May 21st, we'll actually be hosting BCU. Um, we're having a webinar with BCU. And Charles and uh, the other team will actually be on ground. We'll have enough time to actually answer your questions. You can now throw, ask your questions, and I'm sure that Charles will take more time to actually answer those questions. And trust me, there's going to be enough time for us to talk about BCU, the opportunities in the UK, and um, what courses are available at BCU, and um, what you need to do to actually get to BCU. Um, Charles, lastly, before I uh, let me ask you uh, this question. Can, can they still apply for September 2022? Yes, they can, but only through your agency. Um, they can apply. Uh, some hints now is that if you're applying for a master's program, some of the things we want in the application is your WAG. We don't accept NECO, but we have online English tests. Uh, we want a good personal statement uh, why you want to study in the UK, why Birmingham City, why the course you've applied for, why do you want to study these modules. Do some research in Google uh, on the modules 
and it, make it and put it in your words and then your career aspirations. After you finish the, this master's, what do you want to do? There should be a linkage from what you study to what you want to do in the future. Uh, we are looking for official transcripts and notification results. Because of the strikes in Nigeria, normally we look for, we only permit three years uh, notification results. We will now permit five years, again, notification results. But after, if it's older than five years, we want the degree certificate. Um, so those are some of the common things. Also, if you've had a study gap for more than five years, I, you're graduated 2022, you're graduate 2017 or earlier. We want um, later on in the cash shield, when you, before you, you get your, we want to see an employment letter that you, who you're working for because the UK VI will be asking that. So, so these are some of the things prepare, not just for your application, but your future cash and future visa call, if the UK VI call you up and, um, so those are those are some things I would advise. Okay, so um, like Charles said, if you have your complete document, um, a very structured personal statement, yes, you can still apply for the September 2022 intake. Um, admissions uh, admissions are still open, and um, they are still taking applications. And Charles, please, can you tell them um, um, tell them about the fast track uh, option for Nexi? Okay, so what we do is that you apply via Nexi, and there are top agencies. If all we got quite a few agencies in Nigeria um, to for, Nexi gets the number our number one agency because they send more students to us than any other agency. Why is that? Nexi are really good. They know we've trained them. They're really good to know what exactly we want in our application. And you might think, oh, is this not time consuming? No, it's not. If you just submit an, uh, a partial application, we're not on your own. We might not look at it because of the surge. But Nexi then asks you, oh, get this document, get that document. Where's this, where's that? Put it all together before the fast track it. And, and what happens is um, the percentage of um, applications to offers with Nexi is higher than any other agency. I was looking at the data and this is their secret success. They prepare you to, they know exactly what we want and they prepare your application. And then the lays with my colleague, I've got two representatives in Nigeria. One is Vivian and the other is Victoria. And Victoria's on maternity leave, but Vivian lays is with their admissions manager and they talk and they give feedback, but as soon as they're ready, goes to fast track, our admissions people look at it, make decisions, um, send it to the faculty, or if they have got the power to make the decision, to make the offer. Um, or if there's a problem, they come back quickly and say, there's a problem, Sally A, B, C, and get that, and we can make an offer. So because of Nexi's Thora, uh, pre-emissions work they do in applications in Nigeria, they're our number one agency. Thank you so much for that. Lastly, before um, somebody just asked me a question, can you please um, talk about the two years post-study work visa? How true is that? Okay, it's, it's true. It's now called the graduate visa. So if you go to gov.uk, if you want an external source, gov.uk is the British government website. If you type in graduate visa into that, in the search engine of the UK government's website, the information's there. So it's called a graduate visa. Commonly people often refer to P PSW or uh, different other names. And what does that entail? What's their criteria? Basically, if, if you study a bachelor or master's in the United Kingdom and qualify within the time period of your visa and get a completion letter of from the university that you've completed your bachelor and master's, you're permitted to work in the United Kingdom for two years. Part of that process, you have to apply for, for the graduate visa and you have to apply for two years international health surcharge as well. And once you get that and you haven't like overworked during your, as a student 
and you haven't broken any rules or you don't have a police record, you haven't done anything wrong while you're in the UK, then the UK government will then pass it and then you have the legal right to work for two years uh, in the United Kingdom. If you do a PhD, you're allowed three years after. Now, during that time period, many smart Nigerians uh, very much look at what's called a skilled worker visa. You can look at that at government UK, uh, gov.uk, and it gives job categories which the UK government will allow you to work beyond the two years. Now, the graduate visa for bachelor and master students are only two years long. It cannot be extended. But during that two years, you can apply for the skilled worker visa, but only the skill, skilled worker visa gives you certain job categories where you can work. And that can be extended and you can stay more or less indefinite if you get the right job at the right salary, etc. But look at the look at the websites and it'll give you further details. All right, Charles, thank you so much. Um, I, I wanted to even stop you there. I wanted to say it's, it's, it's okay so that um, people can actually hear more on Saturday. And so come Saturday, um, uh, 21st of May, we're inviting you to join our webinar with BCU. So we're going to be having a lot of um, a lot of information to dish out on that day. So you're going to see Charles and um, the team for BCU. And trust me, um, Charles will be on ground to answer all our questions. Um, now I know um, Charles needs to go back to work. And um, he, um, thank you for your time. And I want to say uh, we appreciate you. And uh, we'll be seeing more of you on Saturday. Um, so Charles, um, do you want to tell them about the Saturday event? Uh, will it be available for us? Yes, um, you can correct me. Uh, the Saturday event is happening uh, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock uh, West, West African time. Yes. And it's uh, organized by Nexi. I'm here in, in Birmingham. I'm taking per my personal time. And that will be an opportunity where you can ask me any questions, any in-depth questions. Um, and I hopefully will be able to answer all your questions. And I'll be in a much more relaxed frame of mind. I won't get office disturbances. I'll be at home. So um, uh, so go to that event. If you've got specific questions and you want to have interaction, that's a good time to, to ask me those questions. Nelson? All right. Thank you, Charles. Um, so if you've not registered for the event, just go to our bell and then click on the listing or send us a message. I will send you the link to actually register for the event. Thank you, Charles, for your time. We appreciate and we'll see you on Saturday. You're very welcome. All right. See you, Nelson. Right. Thank you for right. everyone coming today. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.